bass players around the world, and welcome to bass lesson number nine. And today we're going to talk all about chords. While you won't see bass players playing chords on stage every day, we do use them and we do get creative with them. Now there are two practical reasons why you would want to know chords. Number one is communication. If you're in a band and your piano player or guitar player says they're playing a G major seven, you want to know what that is. The second practical reason is songwriting. If you want to go on to write songs, chords are a good building block for songwriting. Now let's go over to the board. I want to hold something up for you. Now most of you that have taken online lessons with me or have watched my video lessons know what that is. And that's the finger pattern for a major scale. If I take this and I lay it over the neck like this, there's your C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Now I can move this anywhere on the neck. I can move it over here. That's a G major scale. If I move it over here, that's a D major scale. And we build chords off of the scale. So, if I wanted to make a C major chord right here, a major chord consists of the root, the third, and the fifth. And remember, we number the scale 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. All right? So to build a major chord, we're going to take the root, which is the C, the third, which is the E, and the fifth, which is the G. Now, if we wanted to play a full chord on the bass, we would play the C, the G, the octave C, and we would grab the E over here. So this would be the pattern, the finger pattern, for a major chord. So if I slip this over, there is your C major chord. I can move that pattern over here, okay? There's your A major chord. I can move it over here. There's your G major chord. So I can move this up and down the E string. Come down over here, there's your D major chord. All right, now just to give you an idea of what that would sound like, turn the bass on over here. We'll play a C major chord. Here's the root, fifth octave, and we'll play the third on the ninth fret G string. Right there, that's your major chord. Okay, now how I'm fingering that C major chord is I'm grabbing the C with the index, I'm grabbing the G with the ring, I'm grabbing the octave C with the pinky, and I'm grabbing the E with my middle finger, and that's how I would finger that chord. Okay, now let's build a minor chord. Now, if I hold this up, what is that? We have, that's the finger pattern for a minor scale. Now let's take the relative minor to C major, which is A minor. And we'll move it over. So there's your minor, minor scale. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. All natural notes. Now let's build an A minor chord. Take the root, the third, the fifth and the octave. Now the third, which is the C, is also over here. We're going to grab it over here. So we'll play the A, the E, the A, and this C over there. And that will look like this. Okay? Now I could take this finger pattern and I can move it up and down the E string. There's a G minor chord. There's an F minor chord. Move it down here. There's a D minor chord. Okay, so as I told you in previous videos, recognize the patterns. All right, so let's just hear how that sounds real quick. Grab the bass and we will play an A minor chord. Here's your A minor. And if you see, my index finger is barring right across. So I'm grabbing that A and I'm grabbing this C over here. 
with my ring finger I'm on the E, 7th fret A string, and with my pinky I'm on the A, 7th fret D string. So A with the index, E with the ring, A with the pinky, and then C I'm barring with the index. Now we don't have to use all four strings to play a chord, we could just use three strings. So again, if I hold this up right here, that is your major scale. Now we could just take the root, the third, and the octave, and this would also be a major chord. So right there, that would be C major. I can move it over here. That would be F major. I can move it over here. That would be G major. So you can recognize that finger pattern. The root, the one, the three, and the octave. So that's a major chord right there. And I'll just play that for you real quick. So you can hear what that sounds like. This would be a G major. Here's an E, e major. You just move that finger pattern wherever you want it, and that's a major chord. Now we could also play a major chord using three notes in another way. Okay, we could take the root, the third, and the fifth. So the root, the third, and the fifth we could grab over here, and that would basically be a major triad. Okay, but it's still a major chord, so we could put it over here, and that would be a finger pattern for an F major. We can move it over here. That would be a G major. So if I were to play that chord with the root, the third, and the fifth, that's going to sound like this. Okay, so the same applies to uh, building minor chords. If I hold up the finger pattern for the minor scale, right, and we take the root, the A, the C, which is the third, and the E, which is the fifth, we could build a uh, A minor chord, be considered an A minor triad, A, C, and E. And I can hold that pattern up over here. So that would be an A minor. I can move that pattern over here. That would be a D minor. I can move it anywhere. That would be an F minor. Okay. And that would sound like this. I'll play a. Uh, Let's say uh, E minor. That's an E minor chord right there with the root, the third, and the fifth. Okay. Now we could also leave out the fifth. If I go back to the minor scale over here. Okay. We could leave out the fifth and just play the root the third and the octave, root, third, octave, okay, and that would look like this, that would be your finger pattern, and again you could take the pattern and move it around, there's a D minor, that's an A minor, that's a bit of a stretch to play that chord, but let's play the A minor, Play it here. Play the E minor. Move up here to G minor. Alright, now if you see chords written down, the major and minor chords are pretty simple to identify. If we were to play, let's say, a G major chord, they would just give you a G like that. And if it was a G minor, you give it a G, and then a little M like that. 
All right, now in blues, a very popular chord to use is what they call the dominant seventh. And that would be used mainly on the four and five chords. I'll show you that in a second. But here is the finger pattern for a dominant seventh. So if I was playing a one, four, five, and E, E, A, and B, I'd play that A7 right there. And then I'd play that B7 down there. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of low. But if we wrote it out, let's say the 1, 4, 5, let's say an E, it would be E would be the 1. A7 would look like that. That's your dominant 7th. And then your B7 would look like that. All right, now I'm going to play you a little something to show you how I would use some of these chords while playing the blues. I'm going to play 1, 4, 5 in the key of E major, and I'm just going to use major and dominant 7th chords. It's going to sound something like this. that you could experiment with and show you how they are built. Again, if we go back to the major scale here, right? There is a G major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for this one, we're going to play a G major seven. So G major seven is going to be the G, the B, and the seven over here, which is the F sharp. That would make major seventh chord. Okay, now if I hold the pattern up over here, that would be your G major seven. And again, you can move this finger pattern around. You can move it over here. That would be a C major seven. You can move it over here. That's a D major seven. Okay, now that chord sounds like this. And let's just play a G major 7. Has some tension to it. Kind of jazzy, right? Okay, and now I want to show you another way we could play that G major 7 that we just played. So if I go back to the finger pattern over here, for the G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, for the major 7 chord I was just showing you, the G major 7, we were playing the G, the B, and the F sharp. The 1, the 3, and the 7. But what we could also do is we could leave this third out, we could play the fifth instead. So it would be G, D, and F sharp. And that would look like this. That would be the finger pattern right there, G, D, and F sharp. All right, now I want to play that for you right now so you can hear what that sounds like. So here is the G major 7 played with the 5th. So this is G, D, and F sharp. Here's the G major 7 with the 3rd. I kind of tend to like the G major 7 with that 5th in there instead. Kind of bright and happy. Now let's build a minor 7 chord. So we'll go back to the minor scale finger pattern. We'll put it over G. Okay, so G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, and G. We're taking the root, the G, the third, the B flat, and the seventh, which is the F. But we'll play this B flat over here. So if I take the finger pattern for a minor 7, Right. Here's your minus seven. I'll just slide it over, and there is your G minor seven. Okay, and that is going to sound like this. And I'm going to grab the G with my ring finger, the B flat with my index, and the F with my pinky, 
That's what that sounds like. Here is the G major 7. Here's the G minor 7. And when you glue and chords together, you can just make a song out of that right there. around with them and see what you can come up with. Alright, if you see these chords written down it would look like something like this. If we were playing a G major 7, excuse my messy handwriting, but it would look like that. And a G minor 7 would look like that. Alright, now let me show you another chord I like to use. It's called the suspended second. And if I put, we'll just use C for the time being, there's your major scale right there, and I'm going to use the second right here. So we're going to play the 1, the 5, and the D, which is the second, we're going to grab up over here. So that would look like this. It will give you a nice stretch, but it's a nice sounding chord. So that is a suspended second chord. Alright, now I put together some chords as a fun little exercise that you could experiment with. We're going to be playing a G suspended second, followed by a G major seven, no third. We'll be playing the G major seven with the fifth. Then we're going to be playing an F sharp minor seven, followed by an E minor seven. All right, and that's going to sound like this. stage too often playing chords because chords on the bass tend to sound muddy. But if you tweak your amp a little bit, you could brighten up the sound. You could use a lighter gauge string. If you use a lighter gauge string, it'll make those chords sound a little bit brighter. And uh, you could also use a little chorus, a little reverb on your amp to make that chord sound richer and fuller. Um, also, if you're jumping around on chords, sometimes you get a lot of squeak from the strings. You know, if you're making big jumps, uh, let's say over here, you kind of want to make that jump without sliding your fingers up the string because if you're recording, you're going to get a lot of string noise and you don't want that. Now, for the chords that I've been playing in this video, I've been finger picking, playing arpeggios like this. But you could also strum the chord. And these are all things for you to experiment with, but uh, there's a lot of things you could do with chords, and I hope you get to know them. That's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe and please share the video with your musician friends. And if you want to take private lessons with me via Zoom, visit stevekonbass.com and shoot me an email. I'll catch you next time. Happy bass playing.